our Heavenly Father. We are so thankful, our Father, that you bless your servants with the opportunity to be able to come before your holy presence, to listen to your commandments, so that we may be able to grow stronger in faith and continue on fulfilling our duties in serving the most holy name. We pray, our Father, that you would please send your Holy Spirit to touch all of your servants that are listening to your words this evening so that we may be able to understand your truth and we'll be filled with your Holy Spirit and we will be able to go on no matter what we encounter in this life, serving and glorifying the most holy name. We realize, our Father, that oftentimes we are not worthy to stand before your holy presence, but yet, our Father, you continue to bless your servants. You continue to give us this opportunity so that we may be able to correct any wrongs that we have done, that we may be able to continue on serving you according to your will and for the glory of the most holy name, so that we may be able to attain that eternal life that you promise unto your children. We pray for those of our brethren that may be ill this evening, that you would bless them, that they may be able to be healed from their ailments and will be able to continue on fulfilling their duties before their most holy sign. Those of our brethren that are being oppressed, persecuted, those that are in hiding and those that are in jail, we ask your Father to please visit them and uphold them with your righteousness so that they too will be strengthened in their faith to continue on, no matter how ill they may be treated, that they will continue on serving the most holy name. We truly believe that you will be with our brother that will teach your words this evening, that you will guide him with your Holy Spirit so that he may be able to teach your word with clarity so that all of us will, that are listening will be able to understand your truth and will be inspired to go on to serve the most holy name. We truly believe that you will be with us throughout our Bible study because we ask all of these things in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, welcome once again to our Bible study wherein we will study the words of our Lord God that will serve as our reminder will serve as our guide in order for us to understand what happened in the past, what we should emulate, what we should distance ourselves from or refrain from doing as not to repeat the mistakes of others in the past and to be able to know if we are still walking in the right path and in the right direction towards where our Lord God wants for each and every one of us. The lesson we will study today is based on a lesson by Brother Ranya G. Manalo that pertains to the act of remembering our spiritual leaders. Now, this lesson has always been taught during the previous executive ministers because they put value on what is written in the Holy Scriptures in order to make prizes, endeavors, and efforts of the previous spiritual leaders will not be put to vain, will not all be for nothing, so that they will continue what others have started in order to remain faithful to the teachings of our Lord God. Unfortunately, after Brother Ranya G. Manalo, during the time of Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, the meaning of remembering our spiritual leaders got muddied. To the point that the meaning of remembering our spiritual leaders has no more value because it is no longer based on what is really written in the Holy Scriptures. In a few days from now, the whole institution of Iglesia and Christ, the Church of Christ under Eduardo V. Manalo would all be sending their greetings, 
will hold activities, prayer, worship services. Um, all their activities will be centered on celebrating Brother Eduardo V. Manalo's birthday. That's how they remember their spiritual leaders. Because remembering any other spiritual leader other than Brother Eduardo V. Manalo would probably be met with um, repercussions that would endanger somebody's uh, being enlisted in the church. That is why it is important for us, brothers and sisters, to remain focused on what is written in the Holy Scriptures. Why is this important? And as a reflection on celebrating Brother Eduardo V. Manalo's birthday, he too should reflect on how exactly did he remember the spiritual leaders, especially him being the executive minister or the leader of the institution Iglesia Ni Cristo? What is the fundamental core value that has been taught to each and every one of us written in the Holy Scriptures? Let us read what is written here in Proverbs chapter 23, 19, 17, and 18. Listen, my child. Be wise and give serious thought to the way you live. Don't be envious of sinful people. Let reverence for the Lord be the concern of your life. If it is, you have a bright future. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, even at a young age, children are being taught to be wise, to give serious thought about how they live. Meaning, even at an early age, we should not be what they commonly call as happy-go-lucky, meaning you don't really pay attention to what you're doing, what you're planning. You're not even planning ahead, what you're going to do with your life. And therefore, most of the time, it will just go to waste. Unfortunately, there are people who are not only happy-go-lucky, but they are also envious of other people, especially sinful people, because they think that their lives are more worth living than theirs but for true believers and followers of our lord jesus christ it is taught to us that our faith in our lord god our reverence to him should be the primary concern of our life meaning our whole life our career our family um, even our work everything should revolve around our worship how we reverence our Lord God, how we perform our duties to Him, so that we know that it will always be aligned to the teachings and commandments of our Lord God in heaven. Now, who had the primary um, responsibility to teach every child about giving serious thought about how we live and making sure that our Lord God is in the center of each and everyone's lives it would be even before listening to the ministers in the pulpit during worship services it will always be our parents our father our mother they would serve as our teachers our preachers in our early age and they will be the one to echo what they have learned in the worship services to us their children so that we will have our faith in god at an early age until such time that we are able to attend worship services on our own and be able to understand exactly what is written in the Holy Scriptures. So that is the role of the parents, the, the father and the mother. And in return, how did our Lord God demonstrate the importance of our parents, our father and our mother? Let us read. Proverbs chapter 28 and the verse 24. Anyone who steals from his father and mother and says, what's wrong with that? Is no better than a murderer. Now, this verse, brothers and sisters, may be off to other people. But if, let's say for example, anybody who knows exactly what happened during the time of Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, what happened to Brother Uranio G. Manalo? What happened to Sister Tani Manalo? Brother Eduardo's parents. If ever they would know 
what is what has happened they would understand that brother eduardo v manalo himself is carrying a big burden especially when he ordered the property of his siblings sister lori and the ancestral home of brother Rani g manalo to be destroyed and even their ancestral properties were taken away from them so by that in itself stealing for the from the father or the mother it says here that that is considered a murder so nobody can say that what's wrong with that because that is exactly what this verse is all about anyone who steals from his father and mother and then all of a sudden say that there's nothing wrong with it especially if they're leveraging it on what is written in the holy scriptures or what they want to be perceived as something that is doctrinal or biblical then that person is guilty of being a murderer unfortunately other people would be quick to think that you know if the executive minister who is the leader of the church is guilty of this then why is he still in the position why is he still the the head of the church what will happen to god's people if they fall short of god's expectations in following his teachings and his commandments even ordinary members of the church especially if they are ministers or if they are executive ministers or spiritual leaders themselves let's continue reading what is written here in proverbs 24 19 up to 20. don't fret because of evildoers don't envy the wicked for evil people will evil people have no future the light of the wicked will be snapped out now if you're wondering why other people even ministers think that stealing for the parent from the parents or persecuting and oppressing other people or putting people into jail without just cause just to be considered as enemies of the church if they find that normal that there is nothing wrong with that even if they are executive ministers that only proves what's written in the holy scriptures the light of the wicked will be snuffed out so if there the light is snuffed out it's taken out what will be left darkness that's why they can no longer see the light what is right and what they see is only darkness and what they will do will be whatever they want to do this is how evil doers do it their wicked acts so we should not be envious of them brothers and sisters even for a while if we are to think that Oh, how come they are at, they're free they're at large they're they're not being um, prosecuted for the things that they have done even though they are wicked always remember that they may escape justice from this world but they can never escape justice from our Lord God if the light in their hearts in their minds have been snapped out and they live in darkness then they will definitely have no future especially the future that we are, are all hoping for which is the grace of salvation come judgment day so how do we steer clear of being envious of the wicked how can we make sure that we will not fall into the same mistakes as those inside the institution who are afraid to stand up on god's righteousness or even to stay away from wicked people let's read what is written here in proverbs 23 and the verses 12 commit yourself to instruction listen carefully to the words of knowledge so in order for us not to be swayed not to grow cold in our faith not to be turned away from our lord god we should ourselves to instruction what kind of instruction the instructions written in the holy scriptures the same instructions that were taught by the apostles by our lord jesus christ 
by Brother Felix Y. Manalo, Brother Aranya G. Manalo. We should listen to them carefully because this is the knowledge that we should equip ourselves with. We should commit to it. And by committing to it, we will be able to follow God's teachings and His commandments. So how can we all commit to this, brothers and sisters? Let's continue reading Psalms 119, 9 up to 11. How can young people keep their lives pure? By obeying your commands. With all my heart, I try to serve you. Keep me from disobeying your commandments. I keep your law in my heart so that I will not sin against you. Beloved brothers and sisters, especially those who are listening, those young people, you know, there would come a time that the young people, even their parents who may be older, elderly, will not be here forever. They will not be there at all times to be able to guide us and tell us if we're doing something wrong, if we are being led astray. That is why even at a young age, as we sojourn in this world, we should maintain our faith in our Lord God and His commandments. We should not steer away from it. In order for us to live pure lives, meaning living a life that is in accordance to the will of our Lord God, we should obey the commandments of our Lord God. Do not be mistaken, brothers and sisters, that whatever a religious leader utter in his sermon or in his instruction are all the commandments of our Lord God. That is why we are being equipped with the knowledge of what is written in the Holy Scriptures. We have been taught the pristine doctrine so that we know if ever a minister would use the pulpit to twist and distort what is commanded by our Lord God. And we can only do this if we are keeping the commandments of our Lord God in our heart. We are refreshed on the knowledge of what our Lord God wants from each and every one of us that will keep us away from sin. So that is why also, brothers and sisters, instead of being angry, instead of being led to hatred towards those who persecute us and oppress us, because there are other people who are asking, well, why do you even pray for Brother Eduardo B. Manalo? You already know what they have done to you and your family and those who are still being persecuted and oppressed. To even to his own family who he put to jail or are constantly hunting down. Yes, that may be true. But always remember, brothers and sisters, that each and every one of us will be accountable to our Lord God. And it is the will of our Lord God that all men be saved. So let us not wish anyone not to be saved. If it is still according to our Lord God's will, and if there is still time, let anyone who may have been wicked, who have done things who, that transgress the teachings of our Lord God, if it is still God's will, let them be able to repent, change their ways, and go back to our Lord God. So there's still hope, hopefully, for Brother Eduardo V. Manalo. Because how can he preach about loving your parents, respecting them, honoring them, if he himself, not only as an executive minister, but a son, a child, was not able to respect his own parents, was not able to follow God's teachings about obeying one's parents. Let's read what is taught by Apostle Paul here in Ephesians chapter 6 and the verses 1 up to 4. Children, it is your Christian duty to obey your parents, for this is the right thing to do. Respect your father and mother is the first commandment that has a promise, so that all may go well with you and you may live a long time in the land. Parents, do not treat your children in such a way as to make them angry. Instead, raise them with Christian discipline and instruction. Now, for those who may be privy to the information on how the family of Brother Ranyo G. Manalo was raised, you would know that 
Brother Irania G. Manalo and Sister Tenny did not in any way fall short of disciplining their children and raising them up as a Christian household. So in turn, the children have the responsibility, the Christian responsibility and duty to obey their parents, to respect their father and mother. Because always remember, this is not only the first uh, commandment that has a promise added to it. It is the commandment of our Lord God that he expects his children, no exception, to follow and be committed to. So if, let's say, a son hears his own mother and brother asking not asking for anything else, just merely asking to be able to speak to him, to talk to him. What would be a reasonable son or reasonable person's response? The response would be, is it to condemn them? Is it to cast them away? Is it to persecute and oppress them or put them to jail? Wouldn't it be to merely open your doors? open your arms welcome them and talk to them would that be so hard because other people would be quick to say the reason why brother eduardo did that to his family is because they were threatening to to take away the position as executive minister no there was nothing like that that was just the propaganda that was spread in order to justify what brother eduardo di uh, manalo did to his own mother, to his father, to his brothers and sisters. I wish, brothers and sisters, that there would be still time for everyone to know the truth of what really happened so that we may be all, all be aware of what's happening and how we can avoid the same mistakes that others have done. Because this would only show the current children under Eduard, brother Eduardo V. Manalo, under his regime, under his administration, that it is okay to disrespect your parents. It is okay to persecute them, not to talk to them, to mistreat them. Because that's the example he has set. But is that what the Bible is teaching? Let's read Exodus 2117. Whoever curses his father or his mother is to be put to death. This is one way for us to know exactly how important this instruction is from our Lord God. By looking at the severity of the punishment if one is not to obey this. Imagine if you were just to curse your father or your mother, the equivalent punishment is death in the sight of our Lord God. What, what does cursing mean to our Lord God? It is when somebody dishonors his father and mother. So, beloved brothers, especially the children, sometimes when we think about it, there was a time when children cannot talk back to their parents or else they know that they would receive a severe punishment but as time goes by the children become to you know talk back to the parents start dishonoring them cursing them and this has gone on until such time that they completely have no respect for their parents whatsoever but always remember that the bible is teaching that those who do that to their parents in the sight of our lord god that is equivalent to death is it just cursing and dishonoring the parents? What's the worst thing that one can do? Exodus 21, 15. Anyone who strikes father or mother must be put to death. If you are to hurt your parents, that is death in the sight of our Lord God. That is why, beloved brothers and sisters, we are all children of our parents. Respect is one thing that we should always have for them. Love is something that should be the core basis of our relationship with our parents. 
true that there would be probably some who are not close to their parents. They may not have the same affection for their parents, but the respect and honor should not be taken away because that is what our Lord God commands us. Unfortunately, there are those who would even use the Bible to justify that we should, you know, that there's a way for us not to honor our parents, to care for them, not to, to love them at all. Just always remember, with love, if you love others, if you love your parents, if you love your brothers or sisters, you would not curse them. You would not dishonor them, let alone strike them if you have love. But is this really a law of our Lord God? Or is this something more of a guidelines? Meaning it's it's gray, it's um, flexible for you whether you want to do it. So let's read what's written here. In Matthew, as taught by our Lord Jesus Christ himself, remember our Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the body, the church or the church of Christ, and this is what he taught. Matthew 15, 4 up to 6. For instance, God's law. So it's not a provision. It's not a suggestion. It is a law. Honor your father and mother. Anyone who reviles his parents must die. But you say, even if your parents are in need, you may give their support money to the church instead. And so by your man-made rule, you nullify the direct command of God to honor and care for your parents. Now, this is a rule, a law. Let me say a law by our Lord God. To honor our father and mother. Again, if we dishonor, if we disobey this, the equivalent punishment is death, to die. But then, our Lord Jesus Christ foretold that there would be those who would justify dishonoring their parents by doing something that is related to the church. He said, even if your parents are in need, you may give their support money to the church instead. Now, is, isn't this familiar? When, when somebody was doing something wrong, to his own mother, brother, and sister, he would say, the reason why I did that is because I love the church. The reason why I did that, why I expelled them, why I had them be treated like this is because I love the church more. The same justification. Hatred and redirected love towards something else, church-related. But that does not justify dishonoring our father and mother. Why? Because of this law, according to our Lord Jesus Christ, if ever somebody justifies it by loving the church instead, by loving, by su giving support money to the church instead, this is, according to our Lord Jesus Christ, a man-made rule, not God's law. So which one would trump the other? It would be God's law. So by the man-made rule, very same rule that Brother Eduardo V. Manalo made, what is the effect? You nullify the direct command of God to honor and care for your parents. So it's, it has become null and void when you follow the man-made rule. So what happens as well to the right and privilege and position of the executive minister who himself violated, nullified God's law? Therefore, whatever he does will already be null and void in the sight of our Lord God. If they conduct worship services, null and void. If they conduct holy supper, null and void. If they conduct other activities for the, our Lord God, 
null and void. If they utter prayers to our Lord God, null and void. Why? Because they were the first ones to nullify the direct command of our Lord God. This is already a direct instruction from our Lord God to honor and care for our parents. So whether you are a Bantay Kapilya, whether you're a SCAN member, whether you're a Jacono, Jaconesa, whether you're a, a Mga Awit, a choir member, or you're the executive minister himself, we cannot and should not nullify the direct command of our Lord God to care, to honor our parents. But he is the executive minister. He is the one leading the church. He is the one who is telling the people to obey the commandments of our Lord God. If he nullifies the direct command of our Lord God, let's listen what's written here in first timothy chapter 5 in the verse is 8 but anyone again this includes everyone there's no exception but anyone who won't care for his own relatives when they need help especially those living in his own family has no right to say he is a christian such a person is worse than a heathen what is a heathen a non-believer a pagan non-believer of our Lord God. So how can an executive minister of the church be stripped of even the right to say that he is a Christian when he himself won't care for his relatives, his own mother, who until now, at her advanced elderly age, is still in hiding. Because they are still hunted down. His brother, nephew, and others are still in prison for a crime they did not commit. Because they hold the power and influence and they control the justice system then. Only now are we seeing a glimpse of hope that justice will be served. But then, five years have passed. Their lives have been destroyed. They have been torn apart from their family. All because of pride. All because he will not obey the commandment of our Lord God. To love one another the way we love ourselves. To love and respect our parents, our father and mother, our brothers and sisters. So that person will not have any right to say that he is a Christian. You know, all of us probably can tell a few tales on how we were raised by our parents. We can also say that probably that at one point or many points we have been punished by our parents. There would be those who can say that they were even maltreated by their parents. Or they did not have a very good experience or relationship with their parents. But it is every parent's duty to raise up their children, especially in a godly manner, so that they may grow up to know our Lord God and follow His commands. That is why we are all commanded by our Lord God that the first commandment with a promise is none other than to love and care and honor our parents. Should we listen to them, brothers and sisters? Should we respect and obey them? Let's read the last verse here in Proverbs 23 and the verses 20. Listen to your father who gave you life. And don't despise your mother when she is old. Like what I told you, brothers and sisters, it is not all our lives, our parents will be here. They will grow old. A time will come that they will pass away. We should always listen to them. Listen to the knowledge that they impart to us. We should not despise them, any of them, especially at their elderly age. When they grow old, it is not for us to disregard them, to ignore them, 
all the more we would we should care for them that is the christian way that our lord god and our lord jesus christ has taught us now it only now boils down to whether we will obey our lord god and his commandments or not because those who will not obey our lord god will not be able to call themselves christians so how do we all the more remember our spiritual leaders it should all come from the very top from the executive minister himself to the ministers to the church workers remember to every household remembering our spiritual leaders means that we should follow the examples that they have left us we should continue to follow god's teachings and his commandments that is why what the bible is teaching us is not to be personality based choosing this leader over the other on that one more popular than the other no this is not the personality that we're looking for what we are following is not the personality but the commandments of our lord god being taught by the spiritual leaders they are only instruments of our lord god so what happens if the instrument of our lord god did not fulfill its function then it is a broken down instrument it is not an instrument that is useful in the sight of our lord god all the more we should not follow it because it is no longer in accordance to the will of our lord god brothers and sisters if others are praying for brother eduardo v manalo because they want to suck up to him as an executive minister to they want to pledge their allegiance and loyalty to him when we pray for brother eduardo v manalo we pray that he may find peace he may be able to reflect on what has happened to the church and to his own family so that if it is god's will he may be able to realize exactly what he has done and if there is time and if it's God's will, he may be able to repent, correct his mistakes. How easy it is to go to the Philippine prison where Brother Angel is being held and be there to talk to his own brother. How many years have passed? Did you know that even before that happened, there were years that he was not talking to his own parents, to his own brothers and sisters? Only a vindictive, hateful heart would allow that to happen. So maybe there is still time. Maybe there is still hope. We can only but pray to our Lord God. Because it is our hope that God will continue to shepherd His children to walk the right path. If they will not obey His commandments and His teachings, then they would be walking in a path that is no longer the path that God has given to them. It will be a path that will lead to destruction. But for those who will remain faithful, remembering the leaders and the teachings, the pristine doctrines that they have taught, and living a life that is filled with holiness, and the setting an example to our Lord God that we are all followers that we are asking guidance that he may continue to help us so that we may be able to finish our race and receive the grace of salvation let us all pray brothers and sisters our loving father in heaven thank you so much O oh god because we know that you are the one guiding your people whenever we are about to make a mistake you are the one who reminds us of your teachings if we have transgressed against you you also remind us that we should repent and correct our ways father in heaven you can give us the peace of mind the clarity of mind only you can help us so that we may be able to be obedient to your will and we Set aside this prayer, Father, to pray for Brother Eduardo V. Manalo. Father, if it is according to your will, may he be able to repent from his ways. 
may he be able to have that strength, the courage to admit his mistakes, to be able to go to his family, forgive one another, love one another, so that he may be able to show the whole church that it is you that he is following. But if it's not, Father, may you continue to protect your children, especially those in dangerous places, our brothers and sisters who are still being held, those who are being persecuted and oppressed, torn apart from their families. Father, please protect them at all times. Keep them safe. Give them hope, Father, that at your appointed time, all of this will come to pass. And then we will all be set free. We will be vindicated and allowed to continue worshiping and praising your holy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much because you are the one who is con constantly interceding our prayers to the Father. Because of you, he listens to our supplications. He forgives our mistakes and continue to guide us so that we will be able to finish our race. Our Lord God in heaven, we are confident that you have heard our prayers, that you have forgiven us of our sins, that you have healed those who have illnesses, those who are sick. You have given us our life and strength and health so that we will use it in glorifying your holy name. For all of these things, we humbly ask and beg in the name of our Lord, Christ Jesus. Amen.